know, in addition to harvesting all of our produce, we also want to harvest seed for next year. And there are certain plants that will come true to seed. We've talked about that before. Um, and uh, this is dill. This is one of them. And I'm just using this as an example because um, I want to show you what ripe seed looks like. Ripe seed versus immature seed. So this is dill weed. And if the seed comes off easily, like this, that is going to be ripe. You want to harvest your seed in the afternoon after the sun has had an opportunity on, on a dry day, uh, after the sun's had an opportunity to kind of dry it. And you can bring it in, cut it, and put it upside down over either in a paper bag loosely, in a paper bag, um, so that it will collect the seed, or you can just simply winnow it. This is called winnowing when you are taking it off of the plant. And here, you have enough dill for all of your pickles next year. Um, when you do this, you want to store your seeds in airtight and cool location. So um, many times people will use like a pill bottle, you know, that's got a nice sealing screw cap. Uh, mark it with the contents and the year that you've harvested it. Um, seed lasts for a variety of different times. Spinach seed is the lowest. And that's usually the next year. It lasts for about one year. Um, dill lasts for about three years. So um, there's charts in our book that show how long the seeds last. There are some plants that cross-pollinate all the percobits. Uh, you have to isolate the flower. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up with some weird gourd type of thing. Um, so that doesn't work so well for seed saving, unless, of course, you want weird gourd types of things, which are fun. Um, but you can also isolate those and um, save your seeds from that. But then there's other things like lettuce, um, kale, a lot of the things that are grown in the permaculture garden that we let just, and the arugula, those sorts of things, you just kind of let them self-sow. You can do it in situ, I, which means in the field, or you can bring them in and plant them so that you know, so that you can place them exactly where you want them, which is what we tend to do in the rover. Um, so seed saving is a uh, lost art, but it is something that is really important to, um, to help um, perpetuate plants that do well in your climate. And you will breed over years, years and years of time each season. Um, you will acclimate those plants to your uh, growing climate. So would you said on the cucurbits? Perfect. They're going to cross pollinate so you could isolate them? How do you, you can. How would you, how would you isolate Well, you would have done it earlier in the year, and you would take a male flower and a female flower, and you would pollinate the female flower with the male, and then you would put a bag over it so that no pollinators could repollinate it. it. Um, and we have done that before. We did that a couple of years ago, and you have to mark it real carefully. Mm -hmm. And it's all a timing thing, and really, you've got a couple hour window from when the flower opens and when pollinators start visiting it. So it's pretty tricky, so we don't mess with it too much because we've got our hands full with other things. But, and then there's tomatoes. Tomatoes are a fabulous thing to save seeds. And I don't know how many of you have tried our various cherry tomatoes, but these orange ones are the sun sugar. They're a hybrid, super sweet. These are sun gold. Um, they're good, but they're not as sweet. And then these are a red cherry. I think they're called Oregon red cherry. Um, these by far are my favorite, but they are a hybrid. And they have been hybridized specifically to have that. Um, you cannot, well, you can save these seeds. And they will be good. They will be good little tomatoes, but they won't be exactly like their parents. Because these um, have been hybridized seeds. These singles, on the other hand, are... Um, Open poly well, tomatoes are all open pollinated, but these will come true to seed. So, how to harvest? Yeah, what you want to do with any um, plant is get a very, very ripe uh, specimen. So let me find this one's very ripe. Okay, so you would take that out. You would take this seed pulp, put it in a glass of water, stir it up, let it set for about two days, the seeds will, the viable seeds will start sinking. You decant the water off, you put more water in there, you stir it up, wait another couple days, and you do that about three times. And then, um, in fact, let's do that. And we'll, we'll do it for this week, 
And then next Tuesday, let's take a look. That'll be a good lesson. Okay, great. So that's on seed saving. Um, thank you very much. And we have lots of chores to do. Don't